In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Kaboom.js game that's going to look uh, kind of like Flappy Bird. First of all, let me show you what the game is going to look like. This is the game. And as you can see, it's pretty basic. But I think it's a good way to learn how to make a Kaboom.js game. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to open up Reply.com and then create a new REPL. And then I'm going to select uh, Kaboom, not Kaboom Beta, but Kaboom because this is our newer version of the Kaboom editor. And then I'm just going to call it Flappy. Um, by the way, feel free to you know, follow this locally if you prefer that. But here, I'm going to be using uh, Replit. And when you open a new REPL with uh, Kaboom, you should see some code here. So let's see what that does. Uh, if you run your code, you should see something like this. So this screen is the uh, Kaboom.js you know, game screen. It's actually just a web view. And let me walk you through uh, the code and what it's doing. First of all, we are importing the Kaboom library. And then we're initializing our Kaboom context or a Kaboom uh, environment. And then we're loading some assets here, just one asset actually. Uh, we're loading this sprite called Bean. And if you go to the Kaboom tab here, you should be able to see that we have a sprite called Bean here. And then we're loading that with load sprite, splites slash bean.png. And then we're calling this sprite Bean. And to add this uh, sprite Bean to the screen, we're uh, using this function called add, which takes an array of components. And each component you know, defines uh, what the game object is and uh, how to show it on the screen. So we're showing the sprite uh, that we call Bean. And then we're defining the position here with the x uh, position and y position. So the x position is the distance from this side uh, to the sprite. And the y position 40 is the distance to the top bar to the sprite. So that's 80, 40. And then uh, we're using this component called area, which I'm going to explain what it does later. And by the way, in this video, I'm going to assume that you have basic knowledge of JavaScript. So if you don't, please let us know in the comment section. Anyway, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to temporarily use uh, this sprite being as our flappy bird. And right now, it's not moving at all, but you know, we want to make it fall. Uh, with gravity. To do that, we just need to use this component called body and add it uh, to that game object. And as you can see, every time we refresh this uh, page with command S or control S, you can see that it falls just like that. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make it so that every time you press the space key, this character jumps. And to do that, you can just use the key press function with key press quotes space comma. And then we're going to define an arrow function that's going to be run every time space is pressed. And to test uh, what we wrote so far, we can just do debug.log space pressed. And once you refresh the web view and press space, you should see something like this. So this lets us know that uh, we're capturing you know, the action where you press the space key. And then to make the character jump uh, on top of that, we need to assign this game object to a new variable called, let's say, player. And then instead of logging this action, we just need to type player.jump and then refresh the page again. And this way, you can see that we're capturing the space key and then the player is jumping. OK, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the sprite with something that looks more like a bird. And to do that, I'm going to add a new sprite here. And you know there are a few different ways of doing it, but I think the easiest way is to use the asset library right here. And then you know you can just search for uh, Flappy or I think Bird, 
and then select this one and now it's imported uh, or you, you know you could draw it by yourself and uh, upload it by yourself or draw it you know right here uh, in the Kaboom editor anyway uh, to use that sprite instead of this being sprite that we were using I'm gonna replace this with birdie and then this with birdie.ping and then birdie here and let's see how that looks so it is working but this is very small uh, so to fix that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a scale component here and then I'm gonna do scale let's say 2 and this way I think it's a good size so this is what we're going to use here and the next thing we want to do here is uh, I want to add the background you know some background that's going to look nice than just this one and you know some pipes here for the bird uh, to go through so to do that let's add this BG sprite and this pipe sprite and then first uh, let's add this background to do that we need to use add again and again add takes an array of uh, what's called components and then sprites bg and here uh, one important thing to note uh, here is that you need to draw bg before birdie and that way you know this bird is going to be on top of the background so let's refresh after loading the bg sprite here sprites slash bg dot png and uh, the background is loaded but it's not filling the whole screen uh, to do that we need to set uh, the sprites height and width so we can do that with uh, the width being the width of the screen and the height being the height of the screen so this function with uh, parentheses this uh, gets the width of the screen and the same thing with this function height hopefully this is going to work so let's see and it is working so this way you know the background is uh, filling everything and the next thing uh, I want to do is I think I want to draw uh, the pipe or one of the pipes at least so let's draw that after the player and to do that I'm gonna say sprite uh, pipe and then the position should be uh, the width of the screen minus let's say 100 and the y position uh, for the y position I'm just gonna use 0 for now and uh, see how it looks again you know I forgot to load the pipe sprite so let's fix that here by writing pipe here and then sprite slash pipe png okay so uh, the pipe is drawn here and by the way there is another way to uh, know you know what the path of these uh, sprites are let me just show you that quickly you can just say insert load code right here and this inserts the code for loading the sprite anyway this pipe is in a weird position so let's fix that you know we need to bring it down over here to do that uh, we just need to change the position of the pipe uh, the y position in particular let's say 300 and uh, let's see how that looks uh, I think I went down a little too much so let me try 200 and I think it looks okay you know it looks okay for now at least and then you know we want to flip this pipe and then put it on top of it just right here and uh, to do that 
we're going to copy and paste uh, this add function here. And then we're going to say sprite pipe and then flip y true. So we're adding uh, an object, a JavaScript object here to define you know, some properties of the sprite. Uh, here we're saying, you know, we need to flip this pipe vertically. And then uh, we're, you know, join these two pipes on top of each other. So we just need to change the position. I think the X position is going to be the same. And for the Y position, let's try 200 for now, minus 200. Okay, so that way, you know, we were able to draw it kind of, you know, roughly in the correct position. And I put minus 200 to show that, you know, we need to draw this pipe from right up here. But there's an easy, you know, easier way to uh, do something similar. So here, I'm gonna replace this with 100. 100 maybe, I don't know, maybe around here, I'm not sure. But anyway, we wanna be able to draw the pipe from the bottom left corner from the Y position of 100 right here. So to do that, we just need to say origin, but left for bottom left. And that way, this is 100 right here. That's the Y position. And we're, again, we're drawing this pipe from the bottom left corner. And the next thing we're gonna do is, you know, right now we're hard coding the positions of these pipes but we want to be able to do it programmatically. Uh, to do that, let me explain what I'm, what I'm going to do with a drawing first. So first of all, we can get the height of the screen with this function, height, parentheses, and then we can get the central point, the central Y position of the screen with height divided by two. And then later, we're going to define a new variable called pipe gap, which is going to be the gap uh, the length of the gap between these two pipes. So once you find the uh, central position with height divided by two, we can just add you know, half of pipe gap this way, and then we get the Y position of the bottom pipe. To get the Y position of the top pipe, we just need to say height divided by two minus pipe gap divided by two. So Let's first try that. So like I said, I'm gonna first define a constant called pipe gap. Let's just set it to 100 for now. And by changing this number, you'll be able to change the difficulty of the game. And then when we draw these pipes uh, for the bottom pipe, we can just say for the Y position, height parentheses divided by two plus pipe gap divided by two. And then we can do something similar for the top pipe, but just do minus pipe gap divided by two. And then you might not see much, much of a difference, but now you know we're generating these positions programmatically. So if you wanna make the gap smaller to 50, you can do that. But let's keep it at, let's say 120 for now. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to move these pipes up and down or generate these pipes, you know, at a random position by moving them sort of up and down. Because if we always uh, generate these pipes at the same position, it's gonna be pretty boring. To do that, I'm gonna go back to the drawing. And conceptually, what we wanna do is we wanna, you know, we have this central point and we wanna be able to move it up and down randomly, just like that. So to do that, we're gonna generate a random number between let's say minus 50 and plus 50, and then just add that to height divided by two. And that way, you know, conceptually, we can move the central point just like that. And to do that, we have a function for it. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say constant offset 
equals ram. So this is going to be the random number between minus 50 and 50. And here, I need to say height divided by 2 plus offset, plus, plus offset right here. And then same thing for the top pipe as well, plus offset. And this way, every time you refresh this game, you can see that the pipe should be generated at a random position, you know, sometimes over here and sometimes over here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to move the pipes to the left. So that way, this birdie is going to stay here and then the pipes are going to come over here. To do that, we're going to use this action function. And this is a function that we can use uh, to specify something we want to do to certain game objects every frame. And uh, to use this action function, we need a way to find these two pipes. And to do that, we're going to use what's called a tag. Uh, so let me show you what I'm going to write here. I'm going to put string pipe here, and then the same string pipe here. So this string is one of the components of these game objects, and it's what's called a tag. And this is a way to specify the type of these game objects. So we're tagging them with pipe, and we can find these game objects using that tag in the action function. So the first argument in the action function is going to be tag of the game objects that we want to you know, do something with or do something to. And then the second argument is going to be the function that's going to be run every frame. And that's going to take you know, each of these game objects. Uh, we're calling it pipe again, but this is you know, a JavaScript variable this time. And then inside this function, we can just say pipe.move minus 60, 0. Move is a function that we can use to move anything in the game. And then we're specifying the x, ox, x offset, which is minus 60, and y offset, which is nothing, 0. So with this, the pipes are going to move like that. If you want to make it slower, you know, you can change the number here to, let's say, minus 100. It's slightly slower now, but let's change it back to minus 60 for now. And the next step is to detect the event where the player collides with one of the pipes, because right now, when that happens, nothing happens. So we need to fix that. And to do that, we need to use this function, player.collides. And this function is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the tag of the objects that we want to detect player colliding. And the second argument is going to be the function that's going to be run when that event occurs. So for now, I'm just going to say debug.log collided. And with this code, let's see what happens. So actually, nothing happens. You know, we don't see the log here, uh, the collided. And that's because we are missing something. And that's this component right here, area. So this component uh, tells Kaboom to create a collision area for this particular uh, game object. And same thing for this one. And we need this component for the for both of the things that are colliding, you know, for the pipes and the player, which already has area. And that's why it wasn't working before, I believe. So let's see if that's actually the case. And now it's working. And of course, you, we don't want to just show this string as a log. You know, we want to go to let's say a game over screen. So how do we do that in Kaboom? To do that, we're going to use what's called scenes. Uh, first of all, let me explain what they are. So scenes are basically different stages in a Kaboom game. 
Uh, so as an example, you know, in your game, you might have three scenes, intro, game, and game over. When the player starts, they'll see the intro screen, and you know, they might click or uh, press something to go to the game screen, you know, play the game a little bit, and when they lose, you know, they'll go to the game over screen, and you can ask them to you know, do some action to go back to the game again. So this is an example of how scenes can be used but in this particular game, we're gonna use only two scenes. Uh, game, which is where you can play the game that you know, we're developing right now. And the game over screen, which is gonna say just game over and you know, show uh, the current score and the high score later too. To make all of that, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap pretty much everything we wrote so far in a scene called the game. To do that, I'm going to use the scene function. This is going to take two arguments. The first is going to be the name of the scene, and then the second is going to be the function that represents what we need to put in that scene. So we can just do that, and let's see what happens. So now you see a blank screen, and that's because we have, uh, we have defined this scene, but we haven't loaded it yet. So basically, Kaboom doesn't know which scene to load unless you tell them explicitly. And to do that, you can just write go game, and now it works. The next thing we want to do is we want to define a new scene called game over, and show some text saying game over. To do that, we just need to write add parentheses and then texts game over. And we need a way for Kaboom to know when to go to this scene. And to do that, you might have guessed already, but we just need to replace this debug statement with go game over, and let's see if this works. All right, it's working. But currently, there is no way for us to go back from the game over screen to the game screen to play it again. To fix that, we're going to add key press here, and then we're going to detect the space key, and then we'll say when the space key is pressed, we want to go to game. And that way, after we go to the game over screen, when you press space again, we go back to the game. And the next thing we want to do is when the player goes out of the screen, you know, either from the bottom side or the top side, we want to go to the game over screen as well. To do that, uh, we're going to write here player.action. And just like we did with this action function, this function is going to allow us to uh, do something with the player every frame. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the player's y position. And we'll say if it's greater than the height, so the height would be right here. If it's greater, that means it's out of the screen, you know, right over here. So if it's the case, or if the position, the y position is less than zero, so out of the screen on this side, then let me write if here, then we're going to go to game over. So let's test that. If you go out of the screen, you go to game over. And if you go out of the screen this way, you go to game over too. And actually, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to add plus 3 here to the height and minus, three, minus 30 here to allow the player to go you know, a little bit out of the screen, but not too much. 
Now, the next obvious flaw that we should fix in the current state of the game is that we're only producing one set of pipes. Uh, you know, we want to keep producing more. To do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this code that we're using to produce those pipes, and then we're going to put it in a function. So we're going to call that produce pipes. And I'm putting this code in a function just for basically style, just so that it's easier to read. And once we put it in a function, we can just call it here and make sure it works. All right, it's working. And the next step after that is to use this loop function. What this function does is for the number that we give here, uh, we say for every 1.5 seconds in this particular case, we want to do something. And that something is going to be contained in this second argument, which is a function. And so we can just put this produce pipes function call here. And every 1.5 seconds, we, we should be able to produce pipes. Just like that. Now, the pipes are being produced right here at a weird location. So we can fix that by going into our produce pipes function here and then removing this minus 100 part. And that way, we're producing these pipes at the right hand side of the screen. OK, so right now the game is a little bit too hard just because, you know, uh, the birdie is jumping a little too hard. We can fix that by giving a number to jump, which is going to represent, you know, how hard the player is going to jump. 100 is probably not enough. So let's say maybe 200. Let's try that. Um, still not enough. Maybe 400. OK. I think it's pretty good. I can play pretty comfortably. And if I want to change the difficulty, you know, I can change uh, these numbers, like how hard the player jumps and how long uh, the gap is, or how wide the gap is. And just looking at the game here, I noticed these pipes are being made at the exact same height every time. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, actually, I checked it earlier, and it turned out the problem was we're producing this random offset outside of this produce pipes function. So let's fix that by putting it here. And now it should be OK. Yeah, it looks OK. The pipes are being made at different heights. And it's more interesting that way. OK, and there are only a few more things that we want to add to this game. The first thing we want to add is a score system. So when the game scene is loaded, we're going to define a new variable called, let's say, just score. We're going to start at we're going to start at zero, and then we're going to use the bottom pipe to keep track of if the player has passed one of these pipes or not. And to do that, we can add sort of a custom attribute here as a component by saying passed false. So what this says is when this custom attribute for each of these pipes is false, then that means the player hasn't passed this pipe yet. And when it's true, you know, the player has already passed it. And then we're going to go back to the pipe action right here. And here we're going to say if the 
pipe if the player hasn't passed this particular pipe and if the player's X position is greater than the pipe's X position, then uh, we're gonna mark the pipe as passed and then we're gonna increment the score by one. So let me write that and then explain that again. So like I said earlier, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to say if the pipe hasn't been passed yet, so if pipe passed triple equals false and if pipe's x position is less than the player's x position, then we're gonna set pipe pass to be true and we're gonna increment score by one. And to make sure it works, let's just log the score here for now. Okay, so it looks like it's working. The score is uh, correctly being incremented. And you know, instead of just logging this score, we want to be able to show it, you know, just right here at the top left corner. To do that, after adding our player, let's actually add uh, before adding the player, a new game object called score text. And this is going to be a text that says, you know, what the score is. So text score. And let's see if it shows up correctly. Okay, it's showing up correctly. But right now we're not, we are, we are incrementing the score but we're not you know, showing it in the score text. To fix that, we can just go back here and say score text dot text is score. All right, it's working, but I feel like this text is a little bit too big, so let's fix that. To fix that, I think the syntax for that is, you know, in the text function, I think it's size um, 40. Let's see if that works. Um, maybe a little bit too small. Let's try 60, a little bit too big. 50 might be okay. Okay, I think this is a good size. I mean, you can still read it, but it's not too distracting from the game. So this is what we're going to go with. Okay, we're almost at the end of the video. We're just going to add three more things to this game. The first is the ability to keep track of the high score. The second uh, is we want to be able to show the high score and the last score in the game over screen. And the third is we're going to add a little sound effect to you know, make it a little bit more polished. So let's do that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show the last score in the game over screen. Uh, doing that is actually pretty easy. We just need to find you know, all the instances of the uh, function call for go that goes to game over. And then we need to add a second argument here. And that's gonna be score. And then this scene function is actually going to be able to uh, take that number score and we can show it right here. So here what we're going to do is we're going to say backspace n to show that we need to create a new line and then we'll say plus score. Actually we're going to say score plus score. So let's see if that works. When I die, it shows a score. If I get a better score, that's reflected in the game over screen. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to keep track of the high score. To do that, we're going to define a new variable here called high score. Outside of any of the scenes, 
because this is going to be common, you know, amongst all the scenes. And then we'll say in the game over scene, if score is greater than the high score, then update high score. And here, I'm just going to reformat it a little bit. And then I'll say plus new line or backspace n and high score plus high score. Hopefully this is going to work. So let's see. Um, it's going out of the screen. So let's make the text a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to say size. Uh, let's try 30. Let's see how that looks. Maybe a little bit bigger, 50. I think this is pretty good. You see score and high score. And let's see if we can update high score. So high score is one now. And then when I die at score zero, high score is still one. And let's just make this just a little bit smaller, just in case, you know, high score becomes like a hundred. That way, you know, all the numbers, all the digits are going to fit here. Okay. And there's only one more thing to do, and that's adding a little sound effect to do that first. Let's go to the asset library and add this sound right here, whoosh. So we're going to add it for when the player jumps. So let's go to that part right here. And then here, I'm going to say before jumping, play that sound. But first we need to import or load this sound. We can do that with insert load code right here, just like that. And then we'll say play whoosh. Hopefully this is going to work. So let's see. I think this might have been whoosh with three O's. All right. Looks like it's working. Okay, so that's the game, uh, but there is one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's this game I ended up making. I'm calling it Reverse Clappy, because, you know, obviously it's reversed. Uh, you know, I just wanted to show you this game uh, just as an example of what you can do uh, with Kaboom. So as you can see, you know, I added uh, some sound effects, music, and, you know, I polished a little bit. And, you know, some people think it's hilarious. Uh, some people think it's fun. And uh, I think it just shows you that it's really easy to build a game, you know, quickly with Kaboom. And the process of building it is really fun too. Um, so, you know, if you want, you know, you can check out the source code uh, of this game or, you know, the simpler version of the same kind of game uh, that we just made together. And uh, yeah, have fun making games.